Welcome, and thank you for joining us. As a key decision maker in the OR environment, your experience and opinion is very valuable to us. You've been invited to preview a device that will dispose of infectious liquid medical waste from a suction canister. Now, hospitals use a variety of methods for the disposal of infectious liquid medical waste. They include pouring, solidifying, or red bagging canisters that are full of medical waste. To set the stage for our discussions today, we will focus our attention on another method of disposal. Via this method, the waste stream will be surgical patient to suction canister to sanitary sewer system. The disposal device we are speaking of operates via a Venturi system. The Venturi system uses water flow to operate the device. The device is powered by tap water. Again, the device is designed to dispose of infectious liquid medical waste from a suction canister. In our first scenario, the healthcare professional rolls a cart containing multiple canisters adjacent to the device. He places one of the filled canisters in the wire basket. Next, he opens the cap on the accessory port and inserts the dip tube into the canister full of liquid medical waste. The dip tube is sized for the height of the canister, allowing fluid in the bottom of the canister to be captured and removed. You activate the pump by turning the handle from the off to the on position. In the next step, we detach the pump tube from the empty canister, then reattach the pump tube to the canister that is full of infectious liquid medical waste. The pump tube facilitates the connection between the suction canister and the evacuation device. The device will empty one liter of fluid in approximately four seconds. While the first canister is emptying, the healthcare professional discards the previous canister, loads the subsequent canister into the basket, and inserts the dip tube. When the canister is empty, he disconnects the pump tube from the empty canister, lightly tapping the end of the tube to ensure there are no drips. The pump tube is then attached to the next canister. The pump remains on during this process to ensure any fluid remaining near the connection does not drip. In the next step, he recaps the accessory port on the suction canister lid, preparing the canister for disposal via red bag waste. The dip tube remains inside the canister and is discarded with the empty can. When the last canister is emptied, the pump tube remains parked on the empty canister to keep the pump tube closed and reduce the possibility of exposure to medical waste. The pump system is then turned off. For our next example, we are using a canister that collects large volumes of fluid. In this case, we will position the canister on the roll stand adjacent to the device. The pump tube remains attached to the previously emptied canister to limit exposure to bodily fluids. We activate the device by turning the handle from the off to the on position. First, we open the cap on the accessory port and insert the dip tube into the canister full of infectious liquid medical waste. Next, we attach the pump tube to facilitate the connection between the canister and the device. The pump evacuates approximately one liter of fluid every four seconds.